You only have 44 minutes. That's all we can speak for? That's it. We can speak really fast. I'm going to get the cover. It's all scratched up, man. I'm almost done. Okay, we're starting here. All right. This past year. Well, we should probably start by saying hi. 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 Here, moved away off. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> Sit up. I am setting up. My head is three times the size of yours. I can be People way back here. People actually knew the real honest. They'd be like, me and that couple of dick are alive. Maybe, but my head is way bigger. So being yeah, back I'm here. Nuts. Exactly. <laughs> that's why I have to sit back here. Otherwise, you look like you have a tiny look. <laughs> <laughs> Just stay up there. Look, our heads are the same size now. Huh? You're a giant. I know. Just anyway, we just wasted a minute of sunlight. I know. Life. I know, it's terrible. We actually have nothing to talk about this week, sorry. Alright, so here we are. Are we? I don't know. Okay. So what do we say? Here we are, in part three. So you're gonna start it? That's pretty lame. I don't know. She said, good evening. Good evening. I just don't feel up to it. Good evening, folks. <laughs> <laughs> The weather outside is frightful. Yeah. We're gonna snow on the forecast. Be like, okay. <laughs> I better not do this too much. You'll end up putting it in there. I'm gonna look like a fool. Alright, let's go. Alright, yeah, sorry. Let's go. Hey, everybody. It's Aaron here again. Oh, and Anissa. From Countryside Acres Homestead. We are on part three. This may end up being four parts. Who knows? But we're on part three of our. Uh, who are we uh, video series so enjoy enjoy mostly about how we ended up here and kind of what we did as far as physically on this place building stuff uh right mm -hmm. i think yeah and like our gardening and we talked a little bit about church so i guess that was one thing for us we had a hard time finding uh for our spiritual needs and we home church most of the time which we covered last time uh, but that yeah i think we would like we desire more spiritual fellowship closer by mm -hmm one thing um yeah yeah and there's it's not like we don't appreciate the church that we do attend the one that's about an hour from here we love them dearly but it mm -hmm. is an hour away and it's uh quite the commitment and it's uh it's not always realistic to make it there uh the other thing we were talking about is our physical and our emotional i put them together i guess um in this because well a lot of physical um, stresses happened this year in our in our lives um, mm -hmm, couple. and it was very emotional as a couple and as a, a family so um, um, it started back last winter we were actually um, only here for a short while and our second oldest son um, ended up getting his tongue stuck to the railing on the deck and you know how that is children are children <laughs> They, um, yeah, you went to lick a piece of snow off, yeah. The you went to there. lick a piece of snow, it's an aluminum and... deck railing, goes all the way around. Yeah, not so, a good idea. In no, <laughs> I don't know how cold it so was he got point. it stuck, got really, uh, really stuck. So then it was ripped off, and well, everybody can probably envision the consequences. So it was, it was quite a big, big ordeal. It, it took quite the piece of skin and. A hospital well, visit. Yeah, the end of the tongue was gone. I, I got ripped underneath his tongue. Too. Yeah, it's underneath. Open, so. Like he's lucky he didn't rip his tongue right out of his yeah, out of his mouth. It was good. pretty, pretty bad. Um, the next thing that happened was in June. Um, 
our 18 month old at the time uh, son stopped breathing on us uh, my mother and my sister were here visiting um, thank the Lord for that uh, they stayed with the other children um, but he stopped breathing um, and I had to do CPR on him and uh, he eventually started breathing again and uh, we took him to emerge um, On, yeah. on our way to emerge, he actually stopped breathing again, so I had to start CPR again in the vehicle. Um, needless to say, it was a very emotional, dramatic experience, um, carrying your lifeless child to the hospital at top speed, hoping and praying, and and uh, we just kept praying the Lord's will will be done. And um, at the end, he is a healthy two-year-old boy, and. And the doctors weren't exactly sure uh, what had caused it. They figured it would happen again if it was, if it, um, yeah. Well, essentially they told us what we said happened, and I know for a fact happened, and there's witnesses to the time frame of it, but he wouldn't be here if that actually happened because nobody can not breathe for that length of time. So um, we do believe in God, and we do believe in miracles, and uh, we believe God spared our son and left him here. Yeah. We were, once he came to, preparing ourselves for mental damage yeah. uh, because he was not right to begin with and was definitely behaving like someone who would have uh, mental impairment. Yeah, like some oxygen, lack of oxygen to his brain. He was very, yeah. very, uh, yeah, he was just not normal when he first came to and it was quite uh, quite ordeal. Mm -hmm. Quite a test of, of for us, a like test of prayer and, and uh, yeah. faith. So that was number two, <laughs> um, and then we went. He's, he's totally better. He he's is actually totally probably fine. better than he and, was before it yeah. happened because he came out of that uh, walking, which he didn't hardly do before, and talking more clearly, yeah. and totally different temperament. He was a colicky kid, and uh, after that, he, he's just uh, just different. It's almost like we always joke that you know God had a, had a talk with him while he was gone for a while or something because yeah, he's night and day difference. So. Um, and then come October, um, I ended up having abdominal surgery for pain that I had been experienced after uh, my cesarean of our last child's birth. Um, I didn't want to go into too much detail there. I might do that in another video uh, later on, but uh, that was obviously a quite a big thing as well. Um, I had to have my mother come in and look after the children so I could recover. Um, yeah, we can say a little bit. I mean, you were in constant pain for uh 18 True. months yeah. or a little over yeah um sometimes like really debilitating where she couldn't almost function mm -hmm. so it was definitely a relief to finally get that surgery and get that resolved so yeah yeah so it took a long time for me to recover from that during that time that i was recovering from that surgery our uh seven-year-old daughter uh was out in the shed um with her brother and her papa and he slipped out of the shed or the shop for a sh just a short short minute while they were grinding uh grain in the hammer room mm -hmm. for the chickens and her snow pants got caught in the hammer mill uh stub shaft so needless to say um that was another hospital visit she, praise the Lord, only had um, a busted knee. Yeah, and a burn at the bottom of her, of her knee. The mm. burn was quite bad. It actually stripped her snow pants right off her, down. Uh, like the one leg. It, it was bound tight right around her knee when I got there. Uh, it had in the process thrown her down onto the ground so she had a big gash in her back when she hit something and she had her one ankle was all bruised up in the fall going down both, both ankles yeah yeah we actually so our second them. oldest son ran in there and he shut the equipment off before i got there and uh yeah just not not good our youngest or our second youngest son i guess was there watched it all um it was quite quite shaking 
for everyone they experienced. Oh yeah, the emotional aspect. Of could have been far thing. worse, yes, of course. It could have been a lot worse, but it's still, we all emotionally took that as it was just so hard, right? Mm. Um, we couldn't, we took her here to the local hospital, but they only had pediatric specialists for her condition. We had to go all the way three hours away from here to another hospital. He drove um, her, um, so of course all the children had to come along, and it was just really emotionally um, draining and uh, scary and all that stuff. So again, it, it tested our faith and and uh, a lot of prayer and then Thanksgiving it went in um, to that as well. So just when we thought things were slowing down, our little guy, um, he's six years old, ended up with um, appendicitis. Is that right? Appendicitis. Yeah. Appendicitis. Um, so right before Christmas, we actually have a video on that a little bit. We just started YouTubing at that time. Um, but again, here we are back in a hospital for another, um, I think he was in there for four or five days. Mm -hmm. emotionally draining exhausting thankful we had some friends from church that uh, looked after the children yeah that took the children. we don't uh, ever uh leave our kids anywhere i guess we, we always yeah. look after them so that was that was hard on its own just to um to let them the stay in somebody else's yeah. place but in this case it was necessary for us to look after wayland but yeah yeah so it was really emotional and it was really hard seeing your your child have to go in for surgery knowing that that was the only option too that you didn't have any other option it was life or death he had to go in for that surgery and uh but it was really good care like the doctors were amazing the nurses were amazing it, it, it was really reassuring mm -hmm. wonderful hospital um couldn't ask for better in that way just about spent christmas there we got it Christmas Eve. Day of, eh? Or day Not before, Christmas I guess. Eve, yeah. yeah. So, and then top that off, we've got some uh, extended family matters that have been uh, weighing heavy on the hearts and minds for the last two years uh, that we're dealing with as well. We won't go into detail on that either, but that uh, also takes constant prayer and thought. So, it's been a very, very draining um, couple of years just with circumstances and stuff. Even prior to us coming here, should we go, shouldn't we go, should we sell the farm, shouldn't we sell the farm, all that stuff, plus the family stuff, plus all these things that we just mentioned now, it's uh, been, been draining, been tiring. Yeah, so then you start good. to wonder, though. I think like, it was good, too. I think we grew, yeah, we grew needed, from it as individuals. And, and the test, mm -hmm. the test of faith, I guess, right? Yep. Um, you do wonder, though, and we have asked a few times whether or not maybe we weren't supposed to come here we're not sure it's been a trying year we're trying to find what to do financially making money um yeah things like that that's been a real challenge so we got you got your family stuff you know with with uh, health and all that, these things but also on top of that we came here full of hopes uh as far as making an income here being relatively debt free and um you know, having 160 acres of land, you think you can make some money on that and, and that should be good. But we found that so far in Saskatchewan, I spent the first three months looking for different opportunities, whether we could get, you know, into beef or, or pork or chickens or something now, that would make an income. There is opportunity big scale. Large like scale. Large scale, oh, yeah. like really large scale. But There's like what we're talking about, it's just smaller scale like you know kind of like a hobby living off your land yeah. and and so a big a draw thing. coming to saskatchewan we love the prairies love the sunshine the blue sky is big open and we love uh, i mean it's cheap it's very very cheap living here you can buy places uh, very affordable compared to back in ontario uh, so that's a draw mm -hmm. but i guess the type of farming we've always talked about doing is is uh, everything on a like a like a old McDonald funny farm or whatever, <laughs> having a little bit of everything and then selling the excess off. So you live off your own land and all the extra vegetables, all the extra meat, the extra eggs, the extra butter, the extra whatever it is, sell that off and then that would be your income source and um, it'd be kind of a self-sustaining unit. That model so far has been entirely impossible here. We, we mm -hmm. have not had any luck and that's been extremely discouraging mm -hmm. uh selling anything um yeah so 
So those, yeah, it's, it's taken us a while to come to that reality that we're going to have to do something different. And that's why I'm working back in construction again now too, because no matter how debt free you are, how frugal you live, there will always be um, some need for cash. Some, you know, there's, mm -hmm. there's still, we have a hydro bill. We'd like to get off grid. Yeah. Um, but again, but like those there's are stuff, yeah. you know, even her breaking her legs, you know, we had to pay for the fiberglass cast and we had to pay for crutches. Um, yeah. We would have had to pay for ambulance had we not drove in yeah, this province. And that was something that, that we weren't, we weren't expecting. So you'll always have bills and anyone that's looking and starting into homesteading, I think you got to take that in, into consideration that no matter, you know, if you're totally debt free, whatever it is, you're still going to have some bills. There's still, you got to put gas in your car and your, in your lawnmower or whatever you need some clothes things break down it, you know you still have costs even running a camera to film something like this costs money so that, that has been a really big challenge coming here was the idea was to spend more time with the family and less time focused on making money um, but the model that we would like and that we feel is best so far has been impossible here and has forced us to go back to a traditional way or mm -hmm. what everybody else is doing of making money and being gone. So I'm actually home less often now than I was when I had the dairy farm that uh, that kept me away from the family. So kind of an ironic twist there. And that thought process really weighs on us as well. Well, what was the point? Why did we mm -hmm. even bother? You know, why did we give up yeah, that what is the for this? Here? You know, I, I'm gone more and make less than, than then. So it seems kind of pointless. So, um, yeah. So, uh, one thing that we were naive about okay. and we we had in Ontario, we just grew up that way, didn't know any different, didn't, you know, there's there's little farmer's markets all over, I you know, some of you people are in Australia and there's some from Pakistan and I know people from all over the world and I don't know what you have in your particular cases, but where we grew up in southern Ontario, there's farmer's markets all over the place, so you can sell anything from... Uh, vegetables or produce yeah for that but i was thinking more animal wise but yeah that that those things too for sure but like anything from like a pigeon all the way up you know rabbit chicken duck turkey uh, all the way up to a cow or a horse or you know, like I auction know. i guess we i would call yeah. that an auction like livestock auction. auctions yeah. yeah what did i call them market oh, okay yeah like a sales barn anyway so you can drop them off and they're all over the place in southern ontario and even northern ontario you can get them trucked down where we were we had an auction barn or like a livestock ring uh, 20 minutes from the farm uh, there's so many opportunities to, to get rid of animals. So when we raised pork in Ontario, we uh, sold from the freezer and whatever we couldn't sell, we could just drop off at the auction ring. And uh, every every week they have a sale and they would just go through the auction and somebody would buy it. So you were never stuck with a whole bunch of stuff. And here, there is nothing. They're the only sales rings here that we are aware of and that I can find is for beef or bison. So the pork... Um, you can't get rid of it. You either sell it from the freezer or you don't sell it. You just keep feeding it indefinitely. The We did a video on pork. We visited another pork farm and she said it's the same thing, the challenge that they face because there's nowhere else to go with it. They do have an arbitrage that they work with, um, but you're not getting you're not getting very good dollar going there. Um, but they did, at least they did have an end result for that. But we have, um, you know, we have some pigeons here. Can't get rid of them. We've rabbits. got, uh, my daughter's raising rabbits, right. uh, which we used to be able to sell. She could I mean, you make a few bucks pay for the feed at least here we have sold two two rabbits uh, in the last year and a half yeah two or three two or three uh got lots more at the barn if anybody wants one let me know right and she's um, advertised she's done the best you know like we've advertised with, uh, on facebook for you know and then we've ever you know she's done yeah. her little homework with it and made up little posters and we've put yeah. them all over for her and um no interest. pigs we haven't tried selling any we only raised what, what we could eat here but i did look into the markets of the possibility of getting a few more sows and and making some farm income again this way. is all small scale small right scale. like small scale just making enough to to yeah like i could i could have signed a contract to put up a big hog barn big industrial scale huge hog barn and i'd have a regular contract with a packing plant we don't want that kind of thing um we're just not into that we, we want small scale farming and, you know, maybe have four sows and, and just sell those piglets. Yeah, so year. we make enough for our own household and then sell a little bit extra to mm -hmm. pay for those extra costs that we were talking Ideally about Ideally provide food at a reasonable cost yeah. to people around us. And then if we can't sell it to them, drop it off the market. Right. Um, puppies. Right now we've got, we've got puppies for sale. We haven't had a single phone call yet. Right. Uh, so we're not sure what we're going to do with all these puppies. Anybody wants a Great Pyrenees 
uh, dog. They're excellent guardian dogs. We've got seven pups here for sale. Uh, and we'll have some lab beer knees cross pups coming soon uh, as well. So it takes um, a little bit of the excitement out of it, I guess, yeah. when it's like, okay, well, what is the point? Yeah, everything we've looked into, we kind of get roadblocked. Yep. Um, and, and you know what? Saskatchewan is still beautiful. It's absolutely an amazing place to live. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want the bigger things straight or if you want to work for somebody as a job, there is opportunities that way, even in construction. It's not like there's an end to the work. There's, there's lots going on. But there is a hindrance here uh, right now. I mean, Saskatchewan only has a million people in it. The whole entire province, spread out over the whole province, there's only a million people. So you're dealing with a, a lot less base than you would in uh, many of the other provinces. Have, have They just have more people to deal with. Um, so that helps. And then the economy wise, it's reliant on uh, the oil and gas sector big time, uh, as well as other sectors, but that is a big part of it. And that's taken a big kicking the last little while. So that hurts the economy here and uh, also makes people less less likely to spend uh, their money on on things like that. So mm -hmm. it's been a hindrance. Um, we, you know, you can get into cows. There's an excellent opportunity for milk and cows here, but again, that's on a large scale, and Buffalo we didn't want to get too. back into that. For bison. Buffalo, yeah. Beef. We looked into getting into beef, but I've been told by multiple people I need almost 300 cows in order to make a living on that. Well, that takes more land again, and again, that's large scale farming. Then, what did we leave our last place for if we're going to do that? So, mm -hmm. the the small scale model that we are looking for, um, and we know works. Mm -hmm just doesn't work here right yeah, so. and we've met other people like on small acreage is trying to do the same thing and they've they're they're running into the same situation yeah. right that they they've had to go back like we know one that's an electrician right they had to go back to working full-time to pay yeah you know another one they started up a market gardening the idea yeah. of selling the vegetables and they put you know their heart and soul into it by the sounds of it and uh, they couldn't sell any vegetables at the end of the year. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they, sold, they sold some potatoes or something and that's all they could. Yeah, mm -hmm. So it's not like we haven't done our homework trying to find other avenues and trying mm -hmm. to figure. So it gets really, really discouraging yeah. when you... We know somebody that sells a lot of um, ducks and chickens and things like that, but they're driving, uh, you know, quite often three hours. or more hours to deliver ducks and chickens. Uh, you're not home a whole lot then either because mm -hmm. it's it's three hours one way. You gotta come home yet too. Because things aren't working out, you we, we've been wondering. Uh, even our oldest daughter has asked us. You know, maybe we weren't supposed to come here. Maybe God's mm -hmm. not blessing us here because, you know, nothing seems to be working out. Between, you know, we've had some some critters die uh, that we you know we try really hard. We had uh, our our milk cow got deathly sick. Oh, we ended sure. up recovering, but but we almost lost her. Uh, there's just been a a whole bunch of setbacks and they could be nothings they could be testings like job faced it could be you know it could be whatever or it, it could be the fact that maybe we pushed the agenda in moving here maybe we weren't supposed to i don't know i'm not sure or god's just testing our faith and saying hey you know how much do you uh do you want to follow me so i guess the real question is is where do we go from here 